So now we're going to look at whether RSA has the security properties we need. We've seen that it has the correctness property, that encryption with a public key and decryption with a private key are indeed inverses. But we want to know also, the most important property, that it's difficult for an attacker who doesn't have access to the private key to perform the decryption. So this is the property that we need, that given ENN, which is the public key, it's hard for an attacker to find D. We actually need stronger properties than just this. We want to also know that the attacker can't learn anything about the message. This is not strong enough by itself to know that an attacker can't learn anything about the message. And in fact, we'll see there are cases where an attacker could learn something about the message without learning D soon. So the first thing we know is that this would be easy for someone who knows the factors P and Q, the two large primes that we multiplied to get N. And we know that because such an attacker could compute the multiplicative inverse of E mod the totient of N. And if you know the factors of N, you know the totient, because that would be the totient of P times the totient of Q, which are both primes so easily solved. So our security argument relies on two things. The first is that showing that all ways of breaking RSA would allow some easy way to factor N. And if we could use that way of breaking RSA to factor N, then we could always use that to factor large numbers. And that would contradict our second claim that factoring large numbers constructed by multiplying two large primes is hard. We're going to show the first thing first, that other ways of breaking RSA, other ways of finding D, would allow us to factor N. And then we're going to argue from experience and historical effort that factoring seems to be hard. So the first question is whether it's easier to compute the totient of N than it is to factor N. So our goal is to show that that's not the case. What should we do to show that? So here are the choices. Given P and Q, show that it's hard to compute the totient of N. Given the totient of N, show that there's no easy way to compute P and Q. Or given the totient of N, show that there's an easy way to compute P and Q.